Hi everyone, welcome to this uh, course, or I guess set of tutorials on um, C programming in a Unix environment. Uh, the intention with this course is to be more or less at the level of what you might do in the second or third year of a university degree, but I'm not going to make the presumptions about uh, what you know coming in. I beyond the fact that you can operate a computer and you've got some curiosity about Linux maybe or maybe not uh, I'm not going to make too many presumptions beyond that and I will try to make these as simple as possible if you are watching these recordings and you feel that they're a little bit uh, complex feel free to pop a question on the discussion board um, in, in the uh, way you could find the, this uh, lecture recording. And I'll actually show you the uh, blog uh, tools uh, at, at the end of this recording. Okay. So let's just have a, let's just go through these. Okay. So what I wanted to discuss today is a few things. Why learn C programming? In fact, why learn programming? What in particular is C programming used for? Why are we using Unix for this? Uh, what computer should I use for these tutorials? What text editor should I use to work on the programming exercises for these tutorials? And what's the teaching approach that I'm trying to use? Okay. So, one, learning a programming language helps you to think more logically. And the experience of programming can make you a better planner. Why? Because when you are writing a program, you need to plan it. So, uh, those tools, the step-by-step -step approach to planning can help you in other areas of life as well. Learning a programming language such as C, C++ and Assembler in particular, but, C pro, but, but programming more generally, allows you to learn something about how computer logic works and uh, C and Assembler in particular, they're like one step away from the machine code, so they give you a bit of an eye into how computers work which I think is quite useful. C is also often a reference language for uh, research papers. So, for example, they may present their algorithm as a C function. Um, that's particularly true in the area of computer engineering, uh, networking algorithms and that kind of thing. Now, C is still used for the maintenance of many legacy systems, including all major operating system kernels, right? Um, even the Windows kernel is actually written in C. Now, that's mainly because no one really wants to rewrite that. It's done, it's established, and in general, that's probably true in most operating systems. However, most kernels that is, that, that's the core part of the operating system, are still written in C because C is as close as you can get to machine language and still be relatively high level, right? Um, C is the preferred language for low level subroutines that handle input and output. And say, for example, if you're using languages like, say, Python or uh, Java, the uh, input output routines in those languages are written in C. Right? And uh, if you're using frameworks, uh, which use a high level language, so like Python, Java, and R, for example, they have parts of the grunt work or the work which is very processor intensive is written in C++ for performance reasons. And then the code you write is in a higher level language, but 
are the parts which do most of the work that are invoked from your code are actually written in C or C++. Uh, database systems and most game engines are also written in C. Uh, C++ is becoming, or it is probably more dominant these days in the games programming area. And C is still around. In fact, a lot of the uh, frameworks that you learn as a C++ games programmer are actually C um, frameworks that are being used in C++. Um, okay. So why are we using Unix? That's also a, quite a good question. So C as a programming language was literally written to write the Unix operating system. There's a direct relationship between various concepts in C language and how they are represented on a Unix file. Unix, and especially Linux, uh, is worthwhile to learn as it's the operating system for much of today's infrastructure, especially network infrastructure, servers, and so on. And let's just have a look at this link. So here we have comparison to usage of Linux versus Windows for web websites. Uh, so we see here 38.9% of websites are hosted on Linux versus 19.8% which are hosted on Windows. Um, if we break that down further, we see that the top 1 million websites in green, 46.5% are on Linux. In the top 100,000, 47.5 and so on. That gives you a bit of an idea. Going on from that, uh, it is an area which is developing more these days, is in the small so-called embedded or Internet of Things market. Now, an embedded uh, system is a system which is basically all on the one chip or all on the one board. Uh, they tend to be uh, smaller, lower powered, expected to be sitting there for years at a time without need for intervention. Uh, and the dominant operating system in this space is Linux. So let's just have a look at these examples of some IoT devices. Come on. Oh, yeah, cool. So here we see what operating systems we use on IoT devices. We see that 71.8% are on Linux. Windows is 22.9 and so on. Uh, going down from there. Now, some of these... Um, probably Linux is the most interesting one there. And so if you do end up developing on uh, a Raspberry Pi or something similar to that, then that's probably uh, going to be good preparation for that kind of thing. So what computer should you use? So unless you already have a Linux computer set up, and if you do, I would suggest you use that. But if not, I would suggest a small embedded device, like, for example, the Raspberry Pi, and uh, I'll be showing uh, in another video how to set that up for going through these exercises. Okay. I'll also provide a virtual box virtual machine for those who would just rather uh, run that on their Windows computer. Now, this has some disadvantages in that 
uh, your computer will run a fair bit slower because you're actually running another operating system inside your computer. And if you've got a slower computer, this might be a little bit too annoying. You could also use the Apple Mac or Windows subsystems for Linux. However, I'm not going to go through those. But ask questions in the forums if you're not sure about anything. Right? Okay. So what text editor? Oh, for all these demonstrations in the tutorials, I'm going to use Vim in a, in a Unix shell. You may not want to do that yourself, and that's fine. You can use whatever you like to edit, but my experience is that not every workplace will have a graphical environment. I've had to log in remotely to fix things on uh, various servers I've had to run for work. So I would recommend becoming comfortable with that kind of thing. And Vim is something that can be installed on every system. I will also be providing a starting Unix PDF that I encourage you to go through to develop familiarity with the environment. Okay. Okay, my teaching approach. I don't want to presume you have any programming background. As much as possible, I want to delay discussion of a concept called pointers for a few weeks, although uh, some basic arrays we will uh, need to talk about. But I'm going to limit that because I feel people get hung up on that. I don't want to jump into that straight away. Uh, this week, I want you to focus on getting the environment set up and becoming familiar with it. Feel free to ask uh, questions in the discussion for this week if you're having trouble. Next week, we'll start on the structure of the language. In the guided discussion, I'll guide you through how to set up your environment. So there, there will be a video for uh, uh, using uh, VirtualBox on Windows, and there will also be a video for uh, setting up the Raspberry Pi. So once you've got environment set up, I want you to focus on the coming week of becoming familiar with Unix and the introduction Unix PDF, which I'll put up for you. Okay. So next thing we're going to do is we'll have a look at the um, part of my blog site where all of this these recordings are, okay? And how this course will work there. Okay, so I just wanted to take you through the overall structure of the way uh, the course materials will be laid out. Currently, I've only got the first week stuff up here, or the beginning of the first week anyway. Now, one thing you'll notice is that each page, I'm going to put the actual URL for it down the bottom. And that's just in case. Say, for example, I might be demonstrating, I might accidentally be in edit mode where the URL is actually different. But we can see right now that they're the same, so that's fine. Okay, and then So we see that there's a little bit of a description here and the URL for the particular week's material. So I just click on that. Now, typically you'll find some lecture slides and a lecture recording. And a discussion forum. Now, there might be multiple lectures. So uh, click and play each one. And some, and there might be some additional re resources, like I'm planning to put up here a link to the uh, virtual box, virtual machine, that kind of thing. 
And each week we'll also have a link for the discussion forum. So we can go in here and I'll just uh, write a note. So, and you can choose things like notify you of uh, new comments, notify me of new posts, etc. Okay. Hey, I got the virtual okay and post you may need to be logged in to WordPress so that's something I'm going to have to test. But yeah, that's basically it.